<laughs> Hi, Mariam. It's Joe here from the upcoming. Uh, nice to uh, nice to see you. Nice to speak to you about Master. Uh, same. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for being on. So maybe just to start off, just sort of tell us a few things about the film. So Master is a horror film, and it's set at Ancaster. It follows three women. Uh, as they deal with racism and the supernatural in an incredibly isolating yet privileged uh, space. That was one of the things that stuck out to me was the setting, I think sort of the unexplored territory when it comes to horror films, you know? So the, the sort of, what was their inspiration for you when you were deciding to set it there at the university? You know, I had gone to a university that was very similar to the school that's depicted in the film. And there was so much um, about even just that space that was very evocative for me and, um, and, and was full of, you know, emotion and horror and terror and history. Um, and in terms of telling the story, I thought that you know, following three black women as they, you know, deal with their their environment, their colleagues, their peers, their friends, um, was was a it was a story that I wanted to tell and that I hadn't really seen. So there was a sort of a personal relationship to the events in the film for you. Yes, yeah, incredibly so. Wow, interesting. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. no, that makes yeah that it's it seemed like that there was a a lot of sort of personal experiences thrown in. Do, do you see it as a kind of a natural evolution from your sort of past work as well, like the stuff you did on Hairwolf as well? Yeah, I do. You know, I think that um, Hairwolf, um, which is, you know, a previous short film that I did is, you know, it's primarily comedic, but it also, you know, plays around in the horror genre. And um, generally for me, I love to mix tones. I love to mix genres. I don't I don't necessarily like to uh, feel uh, confined by, you know, conventional boundaries. And when I'm telling a story, I kind of just let the story and the characters take me um, where they want to go. No, that's that certainly that certainly came through as well with a lot of the sort of the dramatic elements, like sort of the personal subterfuge that you saw between the characters. I mean, interesting, your point about blending things. Uh, what stuck out to me a lot was the sort of mixture of supernatural scares and the very sort of real imagery of racism. Mm -hmm. Do you do you think that the supernatural is a really great way of exploring sort of um, racist sort of, uh, you know, subject matters? I think it can be. I think that I think that every story has its own specific demands. Um, and in the case of this one, um, I, it, it felt quite immediately to me like a horror film. As I was recalling my own memories at being uh, at a space like Ancaster, and even just you know the sort of uh, emotionally investigative process of going back through my own past experiences and and re-exposing myself to, you know, uh, painful moments and past traumas, uh, it, it was horrific in a certain sense. And I, and I, and I felt like, you know, as, a, as an artistic rendering of a certain kind of experience, uh, horror was the best way to tell this story. And in telling the story, um, I necessarily had to discuss, you know, the racism that was at the core of the institution. Um, and I think that, I, I think that they went hand in hand. So you see the sort of the racism and the and the institutionalized sort of prejudice is going as a as a as a partnership. Yeah, that that sort of that really sprung out to me as well. Yeah. Do you did you um do you think that the uh the sort of edge that you were able to give it through your personal experiences made the the supernatural stuff more meaningful, especially to you as a as a as a filmmaker? I think so. I think so. And I would hope that that comes across to viewers because, you know, I, you know, horror films are fun. I love all kinds of horror films, good and bad. I think that, you know, the, the hope always, you know, uh, when you, when you buy the ticket and you sit down in the theater is that it's really going to take you somewhere. But um, the horror films that, you know, stay with me the longest are the ones that, you know, don't deploy um, scares gratuitously and that they really grow from something more meaningful, that they're supported by, you know, a certain kind of emotional foundation that is motivating um, the events that happen. So as I was writing the film and thinking about, you know, these supernatural elements or just, you know, the tone, um, I, I felt like it, it needed to be for a reason. And it was really, you know, growing out of the characters, waking life and their own, uh, you know, their own emotional experiences. Yeah, that was 
yeah, that was an interesting part of it. I think that the, the di- also the difference in the way that each of the characters dealt with their own situations, I thought really sort of sprung out to me while I was watching it. Did you, do you see the characters of, of Jasmine and Gail, do you see them as, as inhabiting different sort of mindsets in different spaces? I do, I do. I think that, you know, uh, beyond being, you know, two different people with just their own, you know, individual approaches, I think that there's a certain um, uh, difference in perspective that can probably be traced down, uh, traced back to some uh, generational differences between them. And I think that, you know, what works for Gail, what has worked for Gail and what she advocates for Jasmine to do is to sort of, you know, uh, keep your head down and, you know, endure and just push through. And, you know, it's from this, uh, you know, this position of, you know, gratitude or feeling the burden also of being, you know, the sole representative of, you know, your race or gender in a particular space. And I think that that's something that I've seen in, you know, in my life and in, you know, um, in people who I know. And I think that for Jasmine, you know, her approach is, very different. She's coming from a very different context uh, than Gail and in a different way. And, and Gail's advice certainly uh, does not seem to be helpful to Jasmine. No, certainly not. Yeah, there's definitely there's definitely a lot of sort of head clashing between them as well, which is which, mm-hmm. which really quite um, striking. Was it was it important for you to sort of examine sort of internal divisions between people like that, who you normally should be united in a, in a front against this kind of issue? But, you know, there is going to be a bit of conflict there. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that was really on my mind throughout writing uh, the script is um, uh, Anne Castor, the school as an antagonist in the film. And I think that one of the ways that that manifests is by, you know, creating these obstructures, uh, obstructions to, um, you know, solidarity and, um, you know, unity amongst uh, the different women who we see in the film, not only the black women, but we also see, you know, uh, the, you know, the white women as well sort of being divided or dividing amongst themselves. And I think that for me, it's it's something that, that I felt and had observed, you know, in this, the way that an institutional um, uh, sort of, energy can can trickle down and can you know begin to influence people's uh, behavior yeah no that was that was definitely a, a a thing that sort of struck me the sort of impassable nature of the yeah. institutionalized effort yeah in i was i was when i was watching the film I, I realized that a lot of the great horror films i've seen recently have all been directed by women do you think that this is all part of a do you think there's a unique take that the female directors have on horror that allows them to sort of interpret spaces that maybe traditionally men haven't been able to? Yeah, I think so. And I'm so grateful for it because I think that, you know, in the history of horror, women have both been inside of, but also outside of horror because, you know, as pictured on the screen, you know, women are so much more present, you know, historically in horror films than in so many other genres. Um, But, you know, that these are in films, you know, largely made by men. So they're, you know, you know, we're still being pictured through the male gaze and still being considered um, in that way. And so, you know, with more female filmmakers uh, making works of horror, there's just like, there's more complexity to the characterizations. I think that there's a lot more depth. I think that, you know, we're able to bring all of the the nuances of our experiences and really color color in and and, and just make things that much more rich. Excellent, thank you, Mariama. Thanks for thanks for talking to me today. It's been a great pleasure, and I, I really enjoyed the film. I look forward to seeing what you've got next coming up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for a lot, Mariama. Thanks so much. <laughs>